when he came to Australia that Melbourne YCW was proportionally the biggest in the world. No other city in the world had a YCW on the scale of the movement in Melbourne. The YCW here developed as I dreamt about it. I want to fast forward 25 years and my wife Mally was a delegate for the catechist as, as the diocesan catechist for the Movement for the Better World uh, annual conference. She was approached by a strong articulate mother who said, Mrs. Perrin, do you know a Father Perrin? I'm his wife, he's my husband. <laughs> Sandra Molman then told of the YCW chaplain in Yarraville and the impact on the young girl's lives. She was still drawn by the simple ideology of Jesus in that family and workplace. Such was and is the power of card life. As I say, are these the musings of an 84-year-old? The answer is yes, yes. Sadly, the ideology of the forces of evil are against it. If I can, I want to make two observations. Here I am in the front line as a chaplain in Vietnam, in the war against the Viet Cong. I was born six years before the Second World War. I lived through Mao Zedong, Korea, Pol Pot, Kuwait, Iraq, and now the Islamic State, and unfortunately the detention centers. I see in all these ideological battles, and we still think we can win them out of the barrel of the gun. That's my first observation. My second is, in, in Vietnam, I came to know Father Francis Thoir, who was tragically made coadjutor Archbishop of Saigon six days before the Americans withdrew. He then spent 10 years in a re-education center until Ten years later, a decade later, he was exchanged with the Vatican where he became cardinal and in charge of justice and peace. Now, just on May the 4th, 19, uh, 2017, Pope Francis declared him venerable on the way to being a saint. When I hear talk today of your Carline community urging the canonization of Carline, I look and I say, Hey, hang, hang on, I've met, I've known someone who's on the way to be a saint. Make it two with Carla. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, the only one at the time. If he's on, you're not, you can't be on. Thanks, Mike. Um, a great view from the, from the grassroots. Right down there, makes reminded me of uh, the big twa cap starting starting with young girls. So, are there any questions for Mike? You've obviously still got the spirit of Caroline and the spirit of Christ Himself and the priesthood. You may not be a, a bishop, but you've still got it in your guts. You're still doing the same work. I think my mother had uh, ambitions that I'd be a bishop, and my wife tells me I would have been a bishop of the utterly worst kind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that um, once you're touched by the ideology of Carline, it is hard to slough it off. Kevin? Uh, Kevin Moore. Uh, there's one thing that uh, Michael hasn't said about his uh, current activities, and that is that he's a member of the um, for the innocent group who work for the people who have been uh, abused by the Catholic Church, and he writes constantly about those issues. And I get great inspiration by reading. And uh, particularly inspired now uh, by the description of his own connection with the YCW and with the men that brought the in the YCW, Charlie McKay and Kevin Wendell and a couple of others. But, uh, 
strike it out of the I would say that he was a guy that I've had before he was still 31. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Six years ago, I joined COIN, Commission of Inquiry Now, before the Victorian Parliamentary Committee of Inquiry and before the Royal Commission. When the Royal Commission started, we self-destructed. But I'm also, and have been, a member for the Innocents, which focuses on healing strategies of victims. When we talk about victims, we're talking of the individuals, their families, and the whole parish community. But I'm also a member of the Melbourne Victims Cooperative, um, focused for me on looking to strategies, and I'm working I think successfully, I hope successfully, that in the rebuilding of St James Garden Vale, the southern transept will be set up as a garden of healing, of reconciliation, as has John, John Crowley at St Pat's Ballarat. But it seems to me that if Jesus is shouting out from the hilltops one message, it says, how can my church have abandoned me? By church, I mean hierarchy neglected. that such innocent people who have been destroyed. That, 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 I will continue with that until healing is complete. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Michael. Well, thank you. Thank you.